Hello and welcome back to A New Bit Here, episode 265. My name is Tom. And my name's Ed. And you can find us at abhpod.com where somewhere on that page, whether depending on whether you're on a PC or whether you're on a device, there's an Amazon banner. Uh, if you click on the Amazon banner, go and do your shopping at amazon.co.uk as you, you know, you just buy everything on Amazon now. Um, you can get it on the same day. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you spend your money as you usually would there, and we get 5% of your total basket spend. It's nothing extra for you. It just takes a little bit away from them, gives us more money so that we can keep on doing this for free. Yeah, um, and if you don't have any shopping to do on Amazon and you, or you want to support us on a more regular basis, along with your Amazon purchases, uh, you can click on a Patreon banner that's close to the Amazon banner, Right, and you go through, and for as little as a dollar a month, it's the only tier we've got, but you can elect to donate more if you want, as a few people have, mm-hmm. which we're eternally grateful for, or as long as they do it anyway. After they stop, we're not grateful anymore. Um, <laughs> um, you get extra content, so you get uh, exclusive after the podcast podcast. That only goes out to uh, the Patreon supporters. Um, you'll get the main episode without the intro. Um all that audio content uh, goes straight to a special feed you can get. There's a little RSS feed. You can copy that into your podcast um, app, and it all gets delivered uh, automatically. You don't have to go looking for it. Uh, occasionally, we'll also do YouTube content, and we'll put that out a little bit earlier for the Patreon supporters. It could be a week. It could be a couple of days. It depends how we're feeling at the time, really. But you'll get it early as Patreon supporters, um, and occasionally we might put extra bits out there. We'll talk to you in the comments and we'll I've put out polls before. Yeah. You know, just we could do people. it again. We could do it again. Who knows? <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> get, get in there. Uh, you can find us on uh, Twitter at ABHpod or Facebook.com slash ABHpod. Also, uh, we have a YouTube account uh, at YouTube.com slash ABHpodcast, which we sometimes do stuff on. Haven't done for a while, but the episodes go up there. Yeah. You can listen to them on YouTube too. Yeah, you can do. Uh, or, and you can get in touch with us uh, via email, as well as on those places. You can get in touch with us via email, ABHpod at gmail.com. If you've got any incriminating stories that you would rather your name wasn't... Um, mentioned in that you want us to read out then do that and let us know uh on this episode we talk about inappropriate band names and also what a foo fighter actually is and we also go through uh, some submissions from our listener fred he, he he contributes a lot and we actually cover some of his stories but before that should we have an adult conversation enjoy <laughs> Yeah, so um, how, how do we how do we start? Now? <laughs> I don't we were know. talking about um, yeah, kind of rent versus buy on various things, weren't we? So um, yeah, like the uh, it, it, uh, it's because I, I want a new car. Yeah, and it, it's the argument over because um, leasing a car is something a lot of people do, and it's something you said you do as well. Yeah, um, and then it sort of comes up. It brings up this argument as like you, you lease your car, but you, you're never going to own it. Mm. But on the other hand, you you don't have the costs involved, like um, like you're saying, MOTs. Yeah, like the reason and, that I lease my car is it's a uh, peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Like it might well be a couple of hundred quid a month that I'm yeah. paying for it, but I never have to put it through an MOT. I never have to pay for maintenance be- or the um, services, sorry, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're free. Oh, they include the uh, services. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So every ten thousand miles, mm-hmm. I get a service done for free. I get, the, I think it's the first two or three. Yeah, I yeah. get for free. Um, and I think the, the fact that you commute quite a distance to mm, work, mm. and also I travel makes, a lot for work as well. Yeah, yeah. So it really does. That that does make a huge difference, doesn't mm, it? Whereas mm. um, you, your 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 car is primarily used for commuting. Yeah. Um, whereas, although I do commute in my car <clears> to work, <throat> it's like yours is three also the, miles. It's the family runaround as well, though. Yeah, isn't but it, you know? it is mostly we use it for leisure. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So I drive like six miles a day for work, mm. and I do that three or four times a week. Yeah. That's it. 
Yeah. The rest of the time, my car is used to do the shopping. It's used to go and visit people. It's to come here, um, <laughs> which doesn't count as commuting. This is well, <laughs> not technically <laughs> for work. Um, not for something you get paid for. No, no, no. You actually <laughs> earn money when you work. <laughs> <laughs> We earned like a couple of quid the other year, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It was yeah, enough think... for a half a pint each. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Thanks. We do appreciate it. That um, was the that was yeah. the old pay, uh, supporter. That was the old supporter method, method. which was um, yeah, yeah. Which um, anyway, yeah. yeah so um, yeah, it does make sense to you, although, like you say, you never have to pay for servicing. Mm. I mean, if you serve service your car, like. Fucking most people service their cars, which mm. is incorrectly. Yes. Um, you know, most people only pay like sixty quid a year for a service. Yeah. Um, I don't. I I pay at least one hundred and fifty pound a year for a service because I realise that service that people do the sixty pound service mm. is for like like people who use vehicles for um going to the shops. work like no oh, for right, deliveries. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people who use their car a lot. Mm should have their car serviced every six months. Yeah. And now that one should be the interims. It's, it's what it's mm. called, the interim service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you do it between it's, your main uh, service. Uh, yeah, it's But people not, do that as a yearly thing. Yeah, which is bad. Which isn't good at all. So I do the major service, sorry, the full service and the major service, mm. but I do that, so each one I do every 24 months. So I yeah. do a major service one year and then a full service the following year. Mm. Because... I take my child in my car. Yeah. <laughs> like my <laughs> family want... go in my car and I don't want it to, I don't want the wheel to fall off yeah. when we're yeah. going down the motorway and things like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. That's just a bugbear. No, it's, it's, it's horses for courses though, isn't yeah. it? Um, you know, uh, as I say, like it's a totally different thing, renting versus mm. owning a house. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a different thing altogether. You are going to make money on a house. You are yeah. never, ever going to make money on a car. No, that um, is very true, yeah. Which it's is appreciating. What, unless it's a classic. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's true, yeah, yeah. Like, they're the only ones. It's classic cars. Yeah, um, you know, Ford Focus, man. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I mean, Future it's a classic. Believe Future me, classic. they're classics. <laughs> they are classics. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think there were so many of them built, possibly not going to be worth a lot. <laughs> no. You know, an E-Type, for example. Yes. You buy an E-Type, you keep it in tip-top condition, you keep it in a garage, you never drive it anywhere, it will make you money The only in time the you drive run. it is to go, look at my car. Yeah, yeah. At a car show, you go and then to you put like, it back in your garage. Yeah, you go to a village green somewhere, <laughs> yeah, stick it. it on a green. Leeds Castle. Yeah, yeah, or Bears did have one, don't oh, they? Do they? Yeah. Oh, they do, yeah, yeah. Classic car shows. Mm. Um, and they don't get paid to go there, they <clears> pay you to show their car. Oh, do they? Is that I right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, that's probably how the... the, 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 the organization makes its money i guess yeah and from tickets i don't understand no like i like going and having a look at cars but like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna you know pay for pay for it like <laughs> like no i mean we went to the leeds castle one because we have the annual ticket for leeds castle yeah sure so <clears throat> so why not and the car show is just there yeah yeah it was really good actually mm. really really good they had some really nice cars mm -hmm. like even <laughs> not just the classic cars they had some like like mods mod cars mm. and they had like um some like there was a um aston martin like a dealer there yeah. showing the aston martins and it's like oh, <laughs> so yeah, nice. I know. people with these cars <laughs> with these engine these twin exhausts like fucking just sitting there going, <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> there is something about a car meet that yeah. uh yeah, yeah. brings i love a... electric cars and i do want yeah. an electric car oh absolutely but but it's, it's never, never gonna... gonna make that noise. <laughs> yeah, but no not... car I ever own is gonna make no, that noise. I'm never gonna own I don't a V8. Have that money. <laughs> never gonna own a V8 or no. a V12. Like it's just never gonna happen. <laughs> I'm never gonna own one of those, so I might as well just cut my losses. I literally don't make enough in a year to insure it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Do you know true. What I mean, yeah, like yeah. a Ferrari or a. So when we say about buying new cars, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is it as well. Yeah. It's like I couldn't afford. Essentially, it's the same thing as you. You want it the reason you do the services is so that you know that it's not going to fall apart yeah the reason... my old car started falling apart and i yeah. was like right i either get all the gear and become a bit of a mechanic yes which i'm not really yeah, yeah, technically yeah. minded like i'd really have to put a lot of effort into it uh or i do yes. the netflix model which is yes, like yeah, yeah. you know i'm never gonna own those films or whatever and they can take them away anytime they want 
Yeah. But I never have to worry about shelf space. Yes. <laughs> I never have to worry about, you know. But, um, yeah, f- from my point of view, it's like I drive a lot for work. I don't need to be breaking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I nearly broke down on the way back from Coventry once with the old car. No need to do that. <laughs> no. I mean, it literally, We, I'm sure I talked about it on here, like, I came back from Coventry after a week away, took Joe out for a meal, and the car broke down in Maidstone, like, wow. on the way to, yeah. <laughs> like, the clutch went. So you literally just got home, got yeah. sorted, went out went again. Went out, and it died. Wow. So, like, that could have been 200 miles in the other direction, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'd have had an absolute insane time getting back. I mean, <clears throat> saying, weirdly, you know, you're saying the Netflix model, and you're saying, like, you, mm. you're never going to own... Mm. those films that mm. are on Netflix um, Liz and I have had to tear up some of our floor yesterday when we had our kitchen done we moved some bits out something leaked and just the floor s- just swelled up mm. quite badly so Ooh. we're going to replace a few, a few of our floor panels Boo. but in order to get the floor panels up we had to move all our DVDs and stuff out mm. and like as we're moving stuff as well I'm like it's like my old stereo I'm like I'm never going to have space to actually put it. We've <clears> kept it in a box hoping <throat> that I'd be able to use it again at some point. Yeah. I might as well just get rid of that. I said, and there's like pulled out the CDs and it was like, well, I mean, we've got Spotify and stuff now. We don't yeah. need CDs. Yeah. And then we pulled the DVDs out. We're like, we don't ever watch these DVDs. No. Like, so we might as well get rid of them. I'll probably keep a few of yeah. the DVDs because obviously some of it is not on Netflix and mm. some of it keep it for prosperity's sake. Mm. But it's weird because. And all the books you've just brought into your kitchen. Yeah. Like, DVDs have now become, like, the coffee table book. Yeah, yeah. They just <clears> sit <throat> there. They sit and there. And you look at them occasionally. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, it's really weird, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, I look at my... We, we've slimlined our DVD. Yeah. DVDs especially, because we were like, we never yeah, watched them. DVDs, because what's the point? Blu-ray, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we got rid of loads, except, like... The bits that we are sentimental about. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, we've kept all the kind of... Joe's kept all the Cary Grant, the Alfred Hitchcocks. Classics all that like that. Kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've kept the Kevin Smith stuff. Yes. Um, so in, in my head. Yeah. In my head. As I was saying about it, when I was about, thinking, I'm like, yeah. Kevin Smith films I will keep. Star <clears throat> Wars films I will yeah, keep. Yeah, yeah. My Hitchcock <clears throat> collection I will keep. My <clears throat> James Bond collection I will keep. Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Although Star Wars now, you've got the... Yeah. Skywalker box set. Yeah. Have you? I don't understand mm. the Skywalker collection. You can get the Blu ray collection, and I think it's like 80 quid right. for all of them. And it's got like hundreds of hours of footage, mm. like extra footage. <clears throat> or you can get the 4K Blu ray collection, mm. but that's like 230 quid. Right. And it's got the same bonus content. And I, th- I think it has an art book or something like that. Why is it so much more expensive? I don't know, man. Like, I just, I don't know whether 4K is a bit of a con. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I don't think it is. No, I'm sure it looks amazing. In order to watch this £240 4K Blu ray collection, you need a 4K capable player and a 4K TV. TV. So it's for the the people who are, you know, properly into having. That's one thing I was going to say as well. We're saying about get rid of the some of the DVDs and Blu-rays because you've got it on Netflix. However, you hear people that are really into their AV stuff, Mm. the audio video stuff. Um, Mm. Now, Netflix, although it's like this is the HD 1080p or 4K stream, it's compressed, so it's not... It's not actually... It's not actually as good quality (laughs) as the Blu-ray itself. Mm. It's good enough for me. Yeah. Some people would be able to see it. I don't. Yeah. No, no. I like, can tell the difference between a DVD and a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But a Blu-ray and, uh, and a 1080p, like a HD Netflix stream, mm. probably not. There's not, not much. Not so much. No, no, no. Although I've never watched a film that I also own on Netflix. That, the oh, really? High, the high-def stream. So maybe oh, I should okay. do that. Maybe I'll find a, a film that I, I actually own and watch them back-to-back. Yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Like, and see but it's got to be something... Anyway. Like Interstellar mm. would be something to compare because yeah. it's visually, or but even also, a Marvel film, also like because the, of the fast, the colours and the fast yeah, action, and, and the audio as well. Yeah, I'll especially with yeah. Interstellar, uh-huh, something uh-huh. like that. Like that score, for example, is so vast. Yeah, I've never seen Interstellar, but the oh, score man. I've listened to, yeah, quite yeah, a yeah. Bit. you know the score. <laughs> 
Yeah. Mm, mm. You know the score. You know the score. Um, I didn't realise as well, it was only when I was watching a... <laughs> talking about interstellar mm. and the score i was watching uh one of these my youtube thing coming out again mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i was watching like a vocal coach reacts thing right and it came up it was a billy eilish performance at the brits mm. when she did no time to die which was or the oscars oh no the, no the, oh did she oh she did, she did the, the uh, yeah, well. yeah 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 um which was great mm. Hans zimmer was like the composer of the orchestra really <laughs> yeah wow okay fair what? enough <laughs> So, so like you're like Billie Eilish like, like, she's great I mean she's done a Bond theme it's like mm. and now she's performing with Hans Zimmer yeah alright she's 19 <laughs> it's like to really not like her <laughs> you can go off some people can't you yeah. overachievers yeah. I was saying this last night we were watching um, we, we couldn't be bothered to watch anything I was shattered last night um, for reasons that we've kind of half alluded to already yeah yeah um, and yeah, we just stuck on like Kerrang. Oh, it has to be done sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, thirty seconds to Mars were on there, and I was like, "This is this is a typical case of overachiever." Like Massive. Jared Leto, <laughs> he's he's a great actor. He's a great singer in a really popular band. Yeah, yeah. He's been in great films. And my so-called life. Uh huh. What did you not remember my so-called life? I don't know what that is. Wow. Okay. It was like one of the first things he was in. Right. It was with uh, Claire Danes. It was a old TV show. Right. Brilliant. Never it was heard brilliant. Of it. Really? No. Oh my god. <laughs> you know the the Atari's did a song called My So Called Life. Uh yeah. That's about Claire Danes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Yeah, so he was in that as well. I think that's where he started, and that's like a classic. Mm. I thought everyone our age knew that. Nah, sorry. Oh my god. Um yeah. No. So yeah, he's yeah, Plus and like two. he looks like he does, and it's just annoying. And it's, it's another thing as well, watching um, climbing videos on YouTube and stuff. And he he's got a series on YouTube that he does. He has a YouTube channel. Oh think, right, like, okay, so he does. He does a series, too. but it's like documentary style things where he goes and does like adventure sports and things mm. like that. And he went climbing, and he was just naturally good at it. Yeah, like of course he is. Why not? <laughs> He's good looking. He can yeah. sing. He can act like a really good actor. Yeah. I'm not bitter. Um, and he can just put it to, to take his hand to anything. He was the shittest joker, though. He probably doesn't sleep. Yeah, he probably. Right. He's one of these people like... Doesn't uh, he sleep either, you know? Just so he can get more done. <laughs> yeah. um, He's going to be Morbius, isn't he? The last vampire or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yes, he was a sh- the shittest joker. But it was a good character. Yeah, yeah. Which he did no, really no. well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it just wasn't a good character. He was the shittest joker. I will give you that. <laughs> it's it's what it's the straw that I'm clutching yeah, to. Yeah. He was the shittest joker. But he was really good <laughs> at what he did. You know. He yeah. just wasn't Joker. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the speaking of? Mm. Have you seen the pictures of Robert Pattinson? As yes, I have. As the Batman. As the Batman, sorry. Even. Yeah. The Batman. <laughs> the Batman, because yeah, that's yeah. what it's going to be called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Looks all right. Looks quite good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he, uh, he's the, got a motorbike. Yep. Which is quite which, cool. Which, you know. And it's a motorbike. Yeah. It's not a weird Not some strange thing. half track, like weird, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, which was cool. Like I really liked the tumble oh, bike. Like, yeah. It was great. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> totally infeasible yeah, in yeah, real life. It didn't make sense. Like, yeah. what, although it was a practical. Pop, yeah. Though it? it did actually work. And I have. I've actually seen that. That was part of the exhibit at the O2. Oh right. That bike was there. Yeah. Well, cool. One of those bikes was there. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks great. I mean, they released that teaser that almost could have been mistaken for a daredevil teaser yeah because it was all in red, red. yeah it was just him sort of doing his tur- slow turn yeah and the only thing that made it not daredevil was the bat symbol yeah. on the chest which people are saying is possibly the gun that joe chill used to kill I his parents people yeah. are like oh that must be what it is and it's like how do you get that that was a bit of a stretch because to me have you seen the version where they uh de- like they took the red away and it's just like a yeah. Monoc- like uh yeah black and white mm. it looks more like it's like it would come out of his chest, clip together, and become the batarang. Yeah. Rather than a gun. Yeah. Cause I know what people say because it looks like it's got two loops on it, which mm. could be like could the be trigger triggered. guard. Yeah. But it, to me, it looks like you would sort of clip it together. Yeah. Like just fold it down. And I reckon downwards. that's probably yeah. more what it is. So it's not going to be bat shaped when he throws it. It'll be mm. more like a boomerang shape mm. or straight. Mm. But 
I reckon yeah. it's just going to be a removable battering. Yeah. But... Like, I like the idea of the gun. Yeah. But... I'm just... Robert Pattinson as Batman, right? <laughs> he looks good. The yeah. suit looks good. I mean, the thing is but with Robert Pattinson... You say Pattinson... he looks good, like... The, the thing is, the suit can yeah, hide yeah, a course. lot. Yeah, of course. I and mean, all you can Michael see of him Keaton, is his jaw. Michael Keaton was Batman. Yeah. <laughs> all you can see is Robert Pattinson's jaw, and you're like, he, he's got a good jawline. The kid's yeah. got a good jawline. That's so, all you really need to yeah. play Batman the is kid, a good like, jawline. He's the same age as us, isn't <laughs> yeah, he? Like, yeah, basically. The guy has got a good jawline. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Robert Pattinson gets a lot of stick because of Twilight. Those he wasn't are... very good in Harry Potter, either. Yeah, uh, true. Um, <laughs> but... Since those, he's gone on to work with amazing directors really? and really, really okay. art house films like Cosmopolis is uh, David, not David Lynch, um, f- is it Fincher? Um, and he's recently in The Lighthouse with okay. Willem Dafoe, which is this like black and white late 19th century thing where two men get stuck in a lighthouse together and weird shit happens. Oh, okay. Like, he's just, he's done really arty, interesting projects. I've never watched... Okay. I I watched Cosmopolis and was like, this is, it's strange. Like, it's him, he's like a billionaire in the back of a limousine and people are getting in and out of this limousine while it's stuck in traffic in New York, people that he knows. Oh, okay. And it's it's all kind of, it's got an artificial look to it. I think it's all green screen. I think everything is green screen. Okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's a choice, but yeah, yeah. Sure why? But because they can, I suppose. Yeah. But is it good? Is he good in it? Yeah, he is a good actor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but the, you know, we've sort people of, find it difficult to get over Twilight, Twilight, yeah, yeah, Twilight and Harry Potter. But the thing yeah. is, as well, we need to realize mm. how often this happens now, mm. where we go, "Oh, really? Him?" Because it's why I don't react like that anymore yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. did it about Heath Ledger playing the Joker that's what I was going to say like, was Heath Ledger was known one. as the, the romantic the comedy, comedy guy. guy and he was incredible as and the people Joker people like well how the hell does the 10 things I hate about you guy yeah and people forget <laughs> Brokeback Mountain though, don't they which yeah. was um, uh, and then Affleck Batfleck yeah yeah people didn't like him in all honesty probably he the was best, great yeah he was really good and it's a shame Batman that people piled slash on slash Bruce Wayne yeah, it's a shame it, people piled on. It's and a then shame it's... he had such a shit film. Yeah, yeah, BVS like, and then Justice League. Yeah, yeah. but he was great. he was a great Batman. Mm. Um, and Bruce Wayne, like he 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 was. You, he had you, both. you either get Batman or Bruce Wayne in them, mm. don't you? And he was mm. both, like mm. really. Because Christian Bale wasn't, I thought, a great Bruce Wayne. No, but it was really good Batman. Yeah. Oh, his voice, though. apart from the voice, but uh, you, you kind of understand the choice. Yeah. Like, the, he would have to disguise his voice because he's so well-known. But the then thing. that's people why the... said, how can you not tell just from the voice? And mm. that, well, so change his voice up. And yeah. then people go, why did he change his yeah, voice Yeah, no, so exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then that's why the Batfleck one had that weird kind of yeah, uh, modulator yeah, yeah, yeah. or something, wasn't it? And that made sense too. Do you bleed? Do you bleed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, as I say, my, my, my kind of... Hatred towards DC is softening. Yes, softening. Definitely. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Birds of Prey. No, I did get around to seeing Parasite, mind you. Okay. Good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The okay. less like, I yeah. If you know about what the story is about, it. I don't know whether it would be as hard hitting, but like, mm. it's a real thriller. Okay. It's cool. a proper. Like yeah, yeah. It's twisty, one, turny. It's on my list of things I do want to watch. It's tense as fuck. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. That and Jojo Rabbit as well. Yeah. I really want to watch. Yeah, you'll enjoy Jojo Rabbit. Parasite is enjoyable, but. Yeah, I might know a, a guy way. who sort of can help me right. watch those. Yeah, so. yeah. His name's Cody. Uh huh. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> Does he work on a lorry <laughs> on the internet somewhere yeah. with a yeah. leaky back door? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't want to get the merchandise, so he sort of chucks it out there yeah. for people just yeah. in case it gets wet. So he doesn't want merchandise <laughs> to get wet with the leak, so he just passes it on to people. But yeah, those mm. two are on my list. Mm. Now, yeah. Birds of Praise there as well, but, you know. Mm. I think we're waiting for a new shipment because the other shipment's slightly damaged yeah, it's you know, enough, it? yeah. slightly yeah. damaged yeah. so it's unwatchable <laughs> um 
This was just like, yeah, I've I've had a tough week this week. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I need to go and see a film. I know, Parasite. Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> but I that will you... cheer me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. God. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm not in one of the millions of homes that are underwater as well. Let's just put it that way. Oh, God. Because, uh, yeah, there's a... There's bits in that film. That <laughs> oh, really? oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The 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 country. It's is we found out that like seventeen percent of all homes in the country are built on floodplains. It, was, it so, seems <laughs> because because people don't plan shit. Although to be fair, green. they probably weren't built on no, floodplains. No, they probably but because of climate change. Yeah, they are now, they are now floodplains. <laughs> Yeah, it's like these houses that fall off of cliffs, they weren't built off the edge of a cliff. <laughs> no. They were built on the cliff, but erosion has caused them to be on the edge and then <laughs> fallen off. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's fucked. Like, I can't get over how much rain we've had it's in the bonkers. last month or so. It's Absolutely bonkers. And it seems to have been raining all winter, like yeah. since about November. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've hardly had any. I mean, we had a, we had a other flurry winter. of snow on Thursday. We didn't. Yeah. You but, did, yeah. Yeah, because we get the extremer weather up here anyway. Up, yeah. We're up at the top of a hill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say mountain because it's not. It's, or cliff. Yeah, it's it, not. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, well, it's a, a chalk. Yeah. A chalk hill. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't get any of that snow, mm. but there was flurries of it sort of on Sheppey and yeah. Petling and stuff like that. But no, down in, the, down in the bowl, we didn't get any. Yeah. I'll tell you what the weirdest one was. What day was it? It was during. It was the first day of our holiday, so right. the Monday after our last recording. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were sleeping in because fuck it. Yeah. We're both off. You know. Why not? And at about nine o'clock, mm. all of a sudden, this ma- one single thunderclap yeah, yeah, that yeah. was right overhead, yeah. and then it it just dropped a load of hail from the sky. In one go, it like literally lasted thirty seconds. Because mm-hmm. the thunderstorm went off, the clap went off, a car alarm started outside. Yeah, and then it just went, and it was just like, and it really it laid, like it was weird. It was you know, it, it covered the ground. <laughs> End times. And like, Joe was like, "Does your car have a car alarm?" I was like, "I don't know," because I only had it a month. <laughs> I imagine it would. Yeah. It does, yeah. and it was my car. Oh, really? So oh, okay. I had to go downstairs to turn the the alarm off, and by the time I got back upstairs, it had stopped hailing. Mm. And it was Weird. just bizarre. Like, one thunderclap, tons of hail, sunshine. <laughs> like, it was weird. Yeah, it, sun- lo- it was like a time lapse of seasons <laughs> changing. <laughs> it was very much film. like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's been a few bits like that. When we were out in Ireland... Um, Last week, yeah. So I was going to ask which airline you used. Actually, I was going to I Ryanair. Remember. It was, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, interestingly, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, interestingly, when we were queuing up to get on the plane, because five years ago we tried it, and <laughs> yeah, 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 Joe couldn't get on because of not having a passport, even though Ryanair f- for a fact was it Ryanair or was it? Yeah, Easy Jet? it was Ryanair. Yeah. It was Ryanair, but it was um, it was the E Dreams company that were like, yeah, you can definitely go. With a driving license, yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, I know," Cause but I need it. you to tell yeah, me yeah. that because I need to make sure. Yeah, because she doesn't; she's not going to be able to get a passport in time. Got to the gate, were turned away by Ryanair staff because their policy states yeah, that you need yeah. a passport. However, this time round, five years later, Joe now has a passport. Uh, you got you're in the queue. Like, have you got your passport? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were like, we're not going to celebrate until we get on the plane. <laughs> we can't. Yeah. We can't say we're definitely going until we're sat on that plane and mm. it takes off. And maybe if it lands, yeah. like if it doesn't turn around midway through the flight or Actually, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, uh, the 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 announcement that came over the tunnel with them was like, um, make sure you have your passports and or. Um, photo identification. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh god! And I don't know whether that means EU yeah. uh, membership card or whatever like that, because I'm sure that that is. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That's a travel document. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it just struck me as uh, slightly ironic. Yeah. That five years ago we were turned away for not having the correct, even though it was the correct, yep. <laughs> travel documentation. 
Um, no, but Ireland was fun. Yeah. Good fun. Um, uh, there's not a lot to do in Dublin except drink. So, um, <laughs> I mean, there, there, you know, there's, there, there, there is there is quite a bit of culture. Out yeah, there, yeah, you know, yeah. It's where Oscar Wilde is from. Yeah, yeah. There was a W.B. Yeats um, exhibition in their in their national library. Yeah, you know, and Joe being an English teacher interested in that stuff. Um, so we did culture during the day and drinking during the evening, sometimes the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Did culture yesterday? So just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, yeah. It's somewhere I'd want. I I do want to go. Like, uh, mm. but it's weird living in like the UK. I've only mm. ever or United, yeah, UK, United Kingdom, or Great Britain, and Northern <laughs> Ireland. Yeah. I was explaining this to someone the other day. That, yeah, what is why England, Great Britain? I don't get it. And I was like, well, <laughs> and I explained it the way you explain it. it. Just it's if you remember. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland mm. that explains everything. Yeah, yeah. Because then from that you can break it down. Yeah. Um. Anyway, living in the UK, never been to Scotland. Mm. Never been to Ireland. The only time I've ever been to um, Wales is I went to somebody's house for a yeah. party and yeah. then went home. Yeah. So I've never really been to Wales. Yeah. Although we did walk around Cardiff for a little bit mm. to go and get a subway. And some cigarettes <laughs> before we got on the coach. Um, yeah. And that was it. Because mm. they had proper tobacco shops, which is novel. Mm. But yeah, I mean, but that's it. Like, I've, I've never been to these places. Yeah, it's a funny thing, isn't it? I mean... It just takes so long sometimes. Yeah, yeah can do. Yeah. The A303 is a bitch. Um, yeah, I mean, we we have done more... In the we're actually we're going up to where are we going? We're going to do Hadrian's Wall no, and nice. coming down to Whitby and that lot mm. um, this summer. <clears throat> we've 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 actually gone to quite a few places. Yeah, uh, we've managed Scotland. Well, we've, we've done Edinburgh. I did tea in the park once and yeah. I climbed up Snowdon. Um, ben Nevis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Snowdon and Snowdon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you know you know yeah uh, yeah I've also done Cardiff and Swansea I've, I've, I've done we've done quite yeah, a bit we've you made sure you, you do when you when Joe's on half term and you put mm. your Tom off you, you guys do travel a lot yeah and within the UK as well because why not yeah there's plenty to do especially now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> although get we, used to it yeah we are planning on going out to Amsterdam at some point some point before the end of the year, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, there 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 is loads to to kind of do. But you never. It's like the town that you live in. You never do any of the touristy stuff in no. your own town, do you? No, not at all. Um, like for example, Rochester Castle. Like we 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 went there for the first time ever never been. a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, because you're just like, well, it's there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if I want to go, I can go. Yeah. But. But I'm, I hadn't done Leeds Castle until I was in my mid twenties. Yeah, like, and that's like down the road for me. Yeah, like Rochester Castle for you is like Leeds Castle for me. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah, mm. you, I can see it. Mm. If I want to see it, I can see it. Yeah, that's about it. And um, I'll go there one day. Mm. But there's so much other stuff. Yeah, to do. I've never like, been to the cathedral. I mean, loads of people have been going to the cathedral. Yeah, I went there last night. Yeah, <laughs> loads of people. It's all over Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 impressive. I imagine. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're talking about? There's uh, something called the Museum of the Moon, yeah. and it's been doing. It's gone around the world. This this yeah, yeah. Uh, art installation, if you like, and they've put a giant, like a seven meter diameter inflatable moon yeah. that has that's been kind of overlaid with 120 dpi images Ooh. of the actual moon yeah uh taken by nasa uh the most interesting thing about it is that you can actually see what the what the dark side of the moon looks like mm. that was the interesting thing for me because yeah. you never see what's the other side yeah. look like mm. cratery <clears throat> yeah like, you that's... realize that the moon is actually protecting us from tons of asteroids yeah that's the side of the moon <clears throat> Yeah, that is constantly pummeled with mm. asteroids mm. because it's always facing outwards. Yeah. And what's interesting as well is that, like, um, the side of the moon that's closest to us, the crust of it is thinner. And oh. the dark side of the moon has a thicker crust for some reason. Weird. 
And you know the kind of the face of the moon, the yeah. seas on the moon, they're all kind of um, like lava, uh, old kind of um, eruption events mm. that have happened. And there's none of that on the other side of the moon because the crust is too thick for volcanoes to have yeah. formed. Oh, okay. <laughs> How so that's it? why... So it looks bizarre. Yeah, yeah. So the the back end of the moon is just a big cratery mess, basically. That's our bulletproof vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, it's... it's Yeah, kind of because the, they've got this kind of ethereal ambient music playing oh, yeah, in they, the background. You would it's, imagine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a real... Yeah. It's worth... It's two quid if you're going in the evening because yeah. they light it up. Ooh. Yeah. That's the time when you go, isn't it? Of that's, course. Because why would you go when it's not lit up? Yeah. In the daytime, it's free. Oh, because it's not lit up. Because it's not lit up, I guess. You know. Yeah. Um, Cover the cost of electricity. They reckon 85,000 people have been there. Yeah, yeah I can believe that. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, know, everyone I know, on Facebook, like I you think say. everyone's been except me and this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I imagine it's quite... Um, Quite you know, breathtaking when mm. you walk in and see it just suspended. It's kind of mesmerising because, mm. as well, with the with the ambient music and stuff, and it's in a church, well. and oh, it's in a, sorry, cathedral, in a cathedral. Yeah, yeah. Which so is you've got that always awe inspiring. Anyway, yeah, I've never been in there, so mm. if I go in there, it's gonna be like, oh my god, this cathedral! Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, the moon! <laughs> Double, <laughs> yeah. Double awe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, yeah, it'll be. I don't. I don't think I'll go. You've seen but, it. Yeah, I've seen it. I have, yeah. And I go, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> That's about it. Um, yeah. I f- saw an article. Occasionally, Facebook will present stuff to you that makes you go, okay, <laughs> you've got me. You, you know what I like. Mm. So they, they present me an article from Loudwire which is the 10 dumbest and therefore best metal band names of the millennium. Excellent. Um, metal band, they've got weird names, haven't they? Like Meshuggah and... Yeah. It's just odd. Yeah, odd Sepultura. Names. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, how about Brutal Sphincter? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. uh, relentlessly offensive and wildly devi- uh, deviant. Sorry, deviant. Mm-hmm. Deviant. Belgium's Brutal Sphincter yearn to make gore grind great again. <laughs> Their fascination with butt stuff goes far past the band's name, having called their second <laughs> studio album Anula. I know, hang on. Anhul Akbar? Anna, I don't, I'm sure it's anal something. Mm. Um, how about Killer Taurus? Killer Taurus? Yeah. It, all one word? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Killer Taurus. Yeah. It's supposed to be like clitoris, but Killer yeah. Taurus. Excellent. It's probably Clitoris rather Clitoris. than Killer Taurus. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Clitoris. Canadian death metal band is a party in black wife beaters. Uh, in the video for aptly titled Married with Children, Calitorous hired a middle aged woman to get crazy in the pit of a basement show. Excellent work. <laughs> I mean, what? Aborted Hitlercock. Wow. <laughs> of all. Uh, d- They're d- English. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, who else have we got? Uh, one word. Mm hmm. I wrestled a bear once. I've heard of them. Really? For, I, I think it's because of like this kind of thing. Do like. you remember the death metal band that we played with at the Purple Turtle called Teddy Bear's Picnic? Teddy Bear's Picnic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is I wrestled a bear once. One word. Uh, couch slut. Nice. <laughs> so weird. The Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. <laughs> Fuck it, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of the silly mathcore movement, here's Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. Extravaganza. This band went four albums deep before ultimately splitting in 2012. <laughs> I mean, there are some. I uh, I assume like a lot of the thrash metal, heavy metal, doom metal, grindcore bands have got like those weird spiky fonts that you can't. Oh really yeah, read. yeah, pretty much all of them. That have got their logo here. It's it's weird. Yeah. I mean, Clitoris the T is a cru- upside down crucifix. Of course it is. Yep. Yep. Um, aborted Hitlercock. It's like a green. I don't know. Squiggly. Like, like the Are You Afraid of the Dark font. Oh right. You okay. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who's that? Yeah, the Tony Danza trap trap tap dance <laughs> extravaganza. It's like a uh, almost like Trivium style. Font. Oh right. Oh, okay. How about this band, mm-hmm. who's um, 
You know how we had a album called uh, a song called uh, "Converse All Stars Might Look Good," blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, but we yeah. just used <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. But they, we just used the letter just because <laughs> yeah. it was fucking stupid. <laughs> this one they've done that, but then they put like a lowercase X in between each letter, <laughs> and, then, and it, it sort of comes down to V P O A A W A M C. Excellent. Which is the v- vaginal penetration of Amelius with a rusty with a musty carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah brilliant well he's a musty carrot a musty carrot that's Austria mm. they're porno grinders excellent apparently the finest porno grinders and 12 years after forming they're still around <laughs> the band's singer Franz Stockwriter named after a serial killer even auditioned for one of those idol shows wow New Jersey band mm-hmm. very American name preschool tea party massacre right Cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a good German band called We Butter the Bread with Butter. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. Destiny Potato <laughs> from Serbia. That's just bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, God. Like the, the There's weird... some weird fucking names for bands out there. Yeah, I mean, when you look at various band names you're like why would you ever have called arctic monkeys yeah it doesn't make when sense. you when you think of but for us because we always hear that mm, name it's just normal mm, cold play yeah i remember um i think arctic monkeys were on one of the i think it was the carling stage at one yeah, of the weddings yeah. that we went to and i looked at the name and was like what the fuck is that fuck's that yeah. Yeah, yeah uh i mean even foo fighters isn't a brilliant name and dave Grohl has said like he would never have called that than that it was just a now yeah yeah it was just something that he threw out at the time and it just caught yeah, on. Yeah. Because, I think it's because of the alliteration. It just... Yeah, yeah. What is a foo and why are you fighting Well, the it? Foo Fighters were a... It oh, okay. was a... Foo Fighters are... It was something to do with the division during the Second World War oh, of okay. the US military. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so it was like a... Uh, uh, what was it? Like a troop. We'll yeah, the like the, you know, 101st Airborne or something, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm going to fact check it. Uh, so, yeah, Foo Fighters <clears throat> wasn't actually uh, a... a, uh, a troop. A troop. Yeah, like a, like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a platoon or whatever. Mm. It was a, it was a term used by Allied aircraft pilots during World War Two to describe various UFOs or mysterious aerial phenomena seen in the skies uh. over European and Pacific theatres. Um, yeah, it was initially described by the US's 415th Night Fighter Squadron. Okay. Um, yeah, term was commonly used to mean any UFO sighting from that period. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and we will clarify. It's not, not alien spacecraft. No, no, UFOs. no, 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 absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, they've been explained away possibly as electrostatic phenomena like as an Elmo's fire, ma- electromagnetic phenomena, or simply reflections from of light from ice crystals. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, I mean, it's a nonsense word, foo. Mm. It came from a comic strip oh, uh, right. called Smokey Stover. Okay. Um And yeah, it was like it was the catchphrase of this character where there's foo, there's fire. Um, and it just meant kind of it, it, it didn't mean anything, really, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, and then, um, I oh, see, I thought foo would come from like the UFO, yeah, that's foo, what I thought foo, as yeah. well. But no, it came oh, basically okay. what it was, uh, in a mission debriefing from November 27th, 1944, uh, Fritz Ringwald. The unit's S2 intelligence officer stated that uh, Myers and Ed Schulter had sighted a red ball of fire that appeared to chase them through a variety of high-speed manoeuvres. Mm. Fritz said that Myers was extremely agitated and had a copy of the comic strip tucked in his back pocket. He mm. pulled it out and slammed it down on Fritz's desk and said, it was another one of those fucking Foo Fighters and stormed out of the debriefing room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, because of a lack of better name, it stuck. And this was originally what the men of the 415th started calling these incidents fucking Foo Fighters. Uh, In December 1944, a press correspondent from Associated Press was sent to the 415th at their base outside of Dijon. 
uh, to investigate the story. It was this time that the term was cleaned up to just Foo Fighters. Mm. Oh, so they were originally <laughs> called fucking Foo Fighters. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> But yeah, it's that quite interesting. Actually actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and they thought that these uh, balls of fire might have been secret German weapons, you know, which, makes which sense is because plausible. They were me- messing around with rockets they and had stuff, some weren't they? Seriously, yeah, yeah. But there were also things. The technology were there. They were also uh, reports, uh, similar reports. Um, put forth by German and Japanese pilots as well at the same okay. time. So who knows? Mm. Yeah, yeah, but that's what a Foo Fighter is. It's okay. a it's a ball of fire in the sky that followed these planes around, mm. and then would like make and then Dave weird. Grohl chucked that out there mm. and regrets and it, it to this day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or possibly yeah. not because mm. I think it's such a I don't know. It's one of those things that sort of becomes second part of the language, doesn't mm, it? Like yeah, Foo Fighters. Everyone knows who they are. What yeah, it's exactly. Easy. It's like Coldplay. Like it just sort of sticks. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Green Day as well. Yeah. Like. Well, but yeah, <laughs> there's a meaning, story behind it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, like when you're talking about really offensive band names, I mean, Cannibal Corpse is up there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but also, there's another one, and I almost don't want to say it because it's fucking horrible. Oh, okay. Um, but it, they're they're like another death metal band that I've heard of in the past, and it's um anal cunt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like. Why would you call your band that? I don't like, know. It's those. It's that weird. I don't know. They, they just do it. To, it's the shock value. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. You just try to be really offensive. Cause I think I imagine the songs are pretty offensive. I can well. only imagine. So if you can make out the lyrics, yeah, you know, yeah, because a lot of these kind of grind core, yeah, super heavy, and some of them are like really serious. Um, some of them are a bit tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, I kind of don't want to allude to it, but we sort of know of a band, a local band, that are quite yes. offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, like... Very funny. <laughs> very, very funny. Um, yeah. But they're, they're great. Um, <laughs> they just they're released a whole... They, they are just, an enigma. An absolute enigma. They just released a whole bunch of new material, haven't they? Yeah, well, yeah. Or they've sort of been few, slowly releasing yeah, it yeah. over the course of a few, a few weeks, weeks and months, it, yeah. yeah. I love them. Yeah, so do I. Um, uh, if only we knew. Yeah. If only we did, yeah. Yeah. It's still a mystery. Try and get them on the podcast if we knew them. Yeah. yeah. But we don't. You know. <laughs> I have. I had reached out to them about coming down. Oh, had you? Yeah, and they're, they're up for it. Oh, really? Oh, nice. The actual band, though. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine they won't reveal who they are. They'll probably come in costume and... You know, yeah, they'll do the interview in costume, so they won't. We still won't know who they are. No, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I that's have, a terrifying thought. I have reached out okay. to them, and I they really... have responded positively. Okay, <laughs> I really like so, the idea of having them on, but I'm kind of scared. Be careful what you wish for. Okay. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, they might be really nice. Guys. I mean, the band is called Death Awaits. So yeah, look them up. Yeah. But I don't want to say they're tongue in cheek because they might not be. I mean, like, they've been going for years. They're so like, they're they're, funny. It's, a, it's a proper band. They're really funny. But I've found out things about them. Oh, okay. That I will only share with you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sweet. <laughs> about the lineup. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. Yeah. There's more people than you realise. Oh, really? But that's not an offensive name no, for a no, band. No, no, but, but the, their, their content, the content is quite offensive. can be very <laughs> offensive, but funny. But in a funny way, yeah. yeah. Like, when I was um, in the kind of hardcore circle yeah, for yeah. a little while, there was a band that I met called McBain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they were like a, a tongue-in-cheek hardcore yeah, band. Yeah. Or, the, all they did were 30-second long songs, oh, like really, brilliant. really short, thrashy songs yeah. about, like, getting pissed on cider and stuff. Brilliant. Like, that was their big thing, but they called themselves McBain. <laughs> oh, so good. There's some real creative fuckers out there. Mm. They really are. Mm. Mm. Um, but I'm just, I'm starting to get back into it again now, like uh, Swamp Stomper, for example. We're, yes, we're you've got a show gigs. coming up. I'm we've got working. three shows coming up. Okay, um, well, the one I'm sure you tagged, or the, did you message me or tag me? Or, I don't know. Actually, you... you 
spoke directly. It would be great if you guys could come. <laughs> and I was, no, I, I, I no, that was a that was a generic. Was invite, that a catch-all? Oh, uh, yeah. uh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, cheers, mate. But I, I specifically word it like that so yeah. that people actually reply. Think it's to them. <laughs> Yeah. No, I am working, so... Yeah. I, I targeted it at people that I thought would come to yeah, yeah. that kind of gig. Which but I would love to. The same but, message went yeah. out to everyone. Yeah, no, <laughs> you can do that now. It's not just invite all. Right. You can add a message to it. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> you can do so that. It's, it's you the, can extra, it's the yeah. extra guilt. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. We've got one in New Cross up in London. We've got one back down here at Poco Loco. Mm. We've got one coming up at the harp restrung in folkestone right we might have one at the o2 islington academy wow nice <laughs> that's cool it's almost it's in it's in danger of becoming a proper band yeah that actually gigs wow <laughs> Which what are you gonna do <laughs> well we're gonna record oh gonna get an album going yeah. nice yeah i like it i haven't done a recording in years no. i'm really looking forward to it because they've done home process. demos i actually like, love that process yeah yeah They'd done home demos and stuff with the old bassist and they were considering putting me in and doing the bass again. Oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. On Fuck the old it. sort but of demos. they're going to so. just re-record everything. That's cool. From scratch. Yeah, songs evolve. That's the thing. It's mm. I know like we we did the thing, where we used to do it all the time. It, it was really stupid, pissed me it? off. <laughs> because we sort of like, yeah, there's a song. Cool. Let's record that. Yeah. And then through playing it, we realize like and then we refine it as we're playing it, and it changes and becomes much better. Yeah. So the recordings were never as good as the live. No, which is really which is good because it sort yeah. of would sort of people should come and see it to hear yeah. that version of it. Yeah. But it's kind of like maybe you should work on the song a bit more before yeah, recording yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And we used to gig the songs for like a year before we recorded it. So when the recording came out, we were already sick of the songs. Yeah, that happened with. Everything on Apathyville, basically, yeah. didn't it? Like we gigged that album for like, yeah, what was it about six months before we actually yeah. recorded it? And then that was all we could play because it was what we were selling. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. so backwards, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good, and it was like yeah. when you sort of get friendly with people, and then they're sort of like recording. <clears throat> you've heard new stuff of theirs because you're mates with them. Yeah. But then they're only gigging the old stuff. You're like, but you've got that really good new song. It's like, yeah, but we haven't released it yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That oh, makes that's sense. how you do it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. But um. Oh, yeah, really cool. looking forward. To yeah, that. that's that's exciting. Yeah. And uh, I like the fact that we sort of where I do that music group at work, and we sort of fiddle about in here sometimes. Mm. I sort of actually pick my guitar up at home now. Oh right. And just like just play about and yeah yeah I'm mean, I just like I enjoy playing. Cool. Mm. 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 <laughs> so, do you want to get another bang? <laughs> no, uh, no uh, yeah, I know you do. Yeah, so yeah. Do. <laughs> you know I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got a spare ten minutes on a Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking of overachievers, um, well, it's just I don't know. It's become a thing creative. again. You know, it's like creative. it's just what I Being enjoy doing. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just good fun. It's like Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. <laughs> I read about that again the other day. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've explained that to me before, I think. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I did that introductory psychology module years ago, mm. it's like a pyramid having your basic needs met before you get up and you yeah. sort of... But it's about uh, motivation and things like that. Mm. And it's like the next level won't motivate you until you've satisfied the level below it. Yeah. And the first one's like basically needs like food and water and yeah. security. And then the next one's about, yeah, anyway. Mm. And then yeah. eventually at the top, <clears throat> it's like self, self sort of, uh, self improvement, things mm. like that. But that's never satisfied because when you've actually achieved something in that self improvement, you want to move on to the There's next, the next thing. thing. Yeah. It's mm. a really good way of explaining it. It's very basic because that's, that. Here we go. That, that only applies for like individualistic cultures, like the West. Where we're only out for ourselves. Where yeah. sort of. Whereas there are other cultures that like are more in in China of... and things. It's a group culture. Yeah. Like they they work towards yeah. the group. So yeah. the, that Maslow's pyramid doesn't actually apply. Mm. It's quite interesting. Yeah, it yeah, really oh, is. absolutely, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really good. There's a guy at work at the minute who's on two to one. 
which is, there's two of us have to stay with him mm. uh, just for his physical health. Like it's like a risk of falling a lot oh, okay. and hurting himself. Right. Um, so there's a, a, a Berta, the Croatian girl that works there as well. She's got a master's in psychology, mm. but she works as a HCA because that's what interests her. Sure. Um, but we were sat together and we were just having conversations. And she was ex- her master's thesis fascinating. So mm. she looked at like people's reasons for becoming vegetarian and conducted a study because obviously you have got the environmentalist vegetarians, you have got sort of like people who do it for the animals, Animal you do welfare. it for people who do it for health. Yeah. And she actually conducted a whole study about oh, it. Oh, right. interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Mm. Unfortunately, it's in Croatian, so... <laughs> she summar- would have summarized to read it in English. <laughs> she had to summarise it in English, so... Right. I could read a summary, I suppose, yeah. of it. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were having a really interesting conversation about it. Mm. It's great. It sounds to me like sometimes your job is like... Um, it's almost like the bit at the end of a party yeah. <laughs> where it's like two or three people that are left and you're talking We're having about... real philosophical yeah, yeah. conversation <laughs> yeah like the weed thought <laughs> but at the end of the day mate I fucking love you <laughs> yeah it, it, I mean when it's on t- like I, I love the job I love spending the duck t- I hate nights because mm. I don't sleep yeah yeah in the last four days I've had about 12 hours sleep yeah not a night in mm. total. Mm. Um, like last night, I went to bed about half twelve. I mean, I, it's, it's not about twelve hours. I woke up at like half seven this morning, mm. um, and then just laid in bed because I was so tired. But the night before that, I had like four hours. The night before that, or the day before that, I should say, I had four hours. And it's yeah. like, but on nights, especially when the guys on two, you have really interesting conversations with people, mm. and that's when you talk to nurses and you can learn stuff. Yeah. During the day, it's so hectic, you can't. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, but, I can yeah, imagine. Nights are great for just talking to people, mm. Um, mm. finding out about their lives and stuff. But yeah. I don't know. That's anyway. super interesting. <laughs> I, just met, I, no, no. I, I don't know where that goes. I just said Maslow's period, and you're, I think you've explained that. I was like, let me explain it. Yeah, 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 no, 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 I know, but it, it's, it's, it's interesting to, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's something that I think, you know, people would be interested in looking yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, why not explain it again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. new people jump in and out, in and out all the time. So but yeah, so I, I I learned it as a psychology <laughs> thing like years ago, mm. as part of psychology. But recently I've read it as in like the co- business context. Mm. So as how to motivate people to work, and then they frame it in. But <clears> it's <throat> weird thing with psychology. So this girl, she's got her masters in psychology. Yeah. And talking to her, and she's like, you know, but psychology is bullshit anyway. Wait, what? What do you mean? It's like, it's like psychological research is, is bollocks. It's like, because like they, and like she said, so you've got that theory, mm. but then that only applies to one culture. Right. And not the whole of that culture, because some people are motivated by different things. Mm. So this guy's conducted all this research. He's put out his thesis paper whatever, yeah. and saying, this is how it works. But then he also says, but not for everyone. <laughs> this, is kind of, this is how it works not really yeah. so, all psychological studies are like that mm. in the book that I read this in recently it's like, and this this is why people are motivated in business but some people believe that's not true and here's another theory and here's another theory and here's and there's like mm. five different theories in the same book and so like, actually so it's like, how do you motivate people <laughs> <laughs> like well, there was that. Uh, there, and, she, I, I, and I explained it because we were talking about it. Uh, I think Wednesday or Thursday night, and she said psychology is rubbish. Mm. And then on Friday night, we had this discussion about Maslow's Maslow theory, and I said, but then they explained like all these five, di- these other theories. And she was like, "See, psychology is rubbish." <laughs> <laughs> She's got a master's in psychology. <laughs> she like studied it for years. Yeah. And she's saying, but it's rubbish. It's that whole thing of like, the more you study something, the more you realise that no one really understands yeah. anything about it. <laughs> I, I said to her, because it was when she said it's rubbish, and she's like, but how do they conduct studies? I was like, with the scientific method. She went, oh, please. <laughs> so, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> you silly man. You don't understand anything. <laughs> okay. Wow! Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll sorry. go back in my box now. <laughs> I'll just sit here quietly then. <laughs> I'll go back in my Pavlov's box. <laughs> oh man! Um, I 
was going to go on to something then, but I can't the Schrodinger had the box, wasn't it? Schrodinger's Sorry. box, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't. Uh, Fred's been sending us some interesting stories, hasn't he? Have you been seeing these uh, cropping up? Yeah, so I've seen one or two. I saw a notification for his most recent one, but I didn't actually look at it. Mm. Um, um, is it Fred's usual yeah, type of story? Yeah, it's which kind of in the great. metro, for example, this one. Women who cook on their periods will be reborn as dogs, religious leader claims. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, an Indian religious leader has said that women who cook while on their period will be reborn as dogs. Uh, I'm not sense. going to read his name because, nope. Because Indian. Uh, a member of the major, oh, he's a shawarma. Uh, <laughs> he made a, the claims at a sermon. In the speech which has gone viral, he reportedly also warns men that they will come back as bullocks if they eat f- the food made by menstruating women. Oh, God. Uh, his comments come as a number of staff at a college associated with the temple are accused of forcing more than 60 girls to remove their underwear to check if they were on their period. <sighs> Religion, huh? Cool. Uh, I, I will urge <laughs> anyone that's listening right now, if, if this is your type of story, mm-hmm. you could go to the Metro and look stuff up, or you could just go to our community section on our Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, because it's um, basically all that. <laughs> and like Fred has posted one, two, three... Four, five, six stories this month on our page. Yeah. Maybe we should get into like the blog on our fucking yeah. website or something. <laughs> did you see Andrew did a Baby Yoda th- meme for us as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we talk about chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Chicky nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> yeah, Fred's always posted loads of stuff. A pigeon with a heart hat on. That's terrible. Someone super glued it to his head. Didn't That's they? nasty. Yeah, don't like that. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just looking at some of the headlines of these tattoos. Yeah, no, no. Tattoos because that's the top story. Mm-hmm. That's the last story he posted. So don't cook on your period unless you want to come back as a dog in your next life. Mm. Yeah, and don't eat food that's if you're a man yeah, that's, that's been made by a woman on her period because you'll come back as a bull. <sighs> It sounds kind of... It's cool. legit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I now can't open that one for some reason. <laughs> or that one. Brilliant. Nice. Mm. Which ones were you trying to open? Uh, the top two. Top two. Let me open the top one. Uh, a woman in Poland has gone blind in one eye. Oh, yeah. And is losing sight in the other after an attempt to get her eyeballs tattooed black went wrong. Uh, why would you do that? What? So having like ink injected into your eye by a needle... Mm. Might could blind make you. you go blind who knew but people do get their eyeballs is tattooed. she going blind or is it just because she used black ink so she can't <laughs> see through it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah a woman in Poland has gone blind in one eye and is losing sight in the other they've just basically the, the, the sub headline that, mm. the, the, has reworded the, the... No, I think it's exactly the same <laughs> a 25 year old from Wroclaw Walk, I don't know. Somewhere what what sound does WR make? V- 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 Vroclav? V- I don't know. Yeah. Was reportedly inspired <laughs> by a rap artist called Popek, who also had the whites of his eyes dyed black. Mm-hmm. After undergoing the procedure, Alexandra Sadovska complained of a pain in her eyes, although it's called fucking stabbing. <laughs> Although she was reassured by the tattoo artist that it was a normal reaction and that she should take painkillers until it was healed. Like, what did she... Why? I mean... Just ugh. get contact. Yeah. Yeah. What a shame, man. Freaks. Um, mum and daughter tricked into licking the feet of Poundworld staff <laughs> who rode them like horses. <laughs> uh, how? <laughs> Carry on. Like... <laughs> Hapless customers were tricked into licking the feet of staff at a pound world store who then rode them like horses oh. in an elaborate plank prank by an anonymous caller. Naomi Desmond, 24, and her mum, Pamela, 55, who has one arm. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's, in, that's important. <laughs> well, it might be when it comes to riding them like a horse. Well, let's see, yeah. Uh, were doing some last minute oh, holiday like shopping a... when they fell in Poundland. When they. F- Sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be so. Snobbish, you know. Mm. Uh, when they fell victim to a bizarre con lasting two and a half hours. What? 
<laughs> the pair now want to sue Pound, Pound World after the discount giant offered them a £200 voucher and apology in return for their ordeal. How can they get 200 things for that? Yeah. <laughs> Pound World. <laughs> How much does this cost a pound? How much does that cost a pound? Uh, a man claiming to be from a charity in Ireland phoned the store and told staff to close it for a team training exercise that involved entering two customers into a competition. <laughs> Pamela and Naomi were the only shoppers inside at the time when the prankster phoned to tell staff to take two customers into the storeroom. <laughs> the two women were duped into believing they could win £3,000 if they endured a series of humiliating tasks at the discount shop in Barnstable, Devon. The manager and another employee, who also fell victim to the host, were then told to take the woman back to, onto the shop floor. Following the caller's instructions, the staff tied string around Naomi and Pamela's ears, <laughs> threw water over them, <laughs> And drew on their faces with pens. <laughs> this is horrific. Why are we laughing? We are bad people. Uh, not as the, bad as that person. No. The humiliation did not stop there as the pranks ordered oh the staff God. to ride Naomi and Pamela down the aisles in a human horse race. <laughs> <laughs> The mum said he got one arm. <laughs> Tom, fucking hell. <laughs> she, she got a head start. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Isn't it in horse racing you win by a nose? Yeah. Isn't it? It's not. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, is is there. No. No. <laughs> I'm not going to win by an arm, do you? At one point, yeah. Naomi and her disabled mother were told to lick the feet of the staff. Throughout the ordeal, the staff had to refer to the two women as ugly and beast. Oh, my and return, God. And in return, they had to call the manager beautiful lady with the promise of £50 each time they said it. Oh, my God. Oh um, yeah, we really shouldn't be laughing at this. It's just completely unbelievable. That's horrific. Like, how would you, like, this is Darren Brown level oh, shit, it is. isn't it? Like, the the cruel antics inside the store continued for nearly two hours oh until the caller finally said the training exercise had ended. This is a horror film. That this is mad. sore. This is, is like you know. But minutes later, as Pamela and Naomi left the store, Naomi got a call on her mobile phone from the hoaxer. What the fuck? That's mad. Demanding them to, to, to return to win more money. The two women returned, and when they found the store closed, they were made to crawl around outside on their hands and knees, which they did for half an hour. Eventually, staff inside the store stopped the woman and called the head office, at which point they realised they'd all been duped. Pamela, a ho uh, hospital telephonist, said at first it was funny, like a game show. It all happened on the shop floor. They were asked to get onto our backs as they rode us up and down the aisle like a horse race. But after... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but afterwards we felt embarrassed. We genuinely thought it was head office. <laughs> I'm disabled, so that makes it even worse. And the caller knew... Naomi added, we are both too scared to go into Pound World now. <clears throat> oh... A Pound World spokesman said, We apologise unreservedly to our customers for their experience at our Barnstable store, which our team also fell victim of. Um... Now... <laughs> wow! That's terrible. The issue, like, who was it? Yeah. Because the thing is, because they're the, the women are suing Pound World, mm. but it wasn't Pound it wasn't World that Pound conducted World that the hoax. Now... On the other hand, I'm looking at this kind of like they thought they were going to win three grand. Yeah. Pound win win. Here's two hundred pound voucher. Yeah. For our store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, they need to be. Yeah. Uh, they need to be given something. Like even if they're only going to give them two hundred pounds, then at least <clears throat> give them two hundred pounds. Yeah. Not for fucking pound world, which they're scared to go into now. 
No, how? But also, the man claiming to be from a charity in Ireland, yeah. so it wasn't even a head office thing anyway. No. Like, <laughs> why would they do it? Like, yeah. But a team. Why would a charity in Ireland phone your shop in Devon and yeah. say, "Oh, I'm conducting a team training exercise"? Yeah. Like that doesn't make sense. But also, how the. F- I guess he probably could have asked for her phone number when he was saying about giving them the money. Yeah, I mean... He claimed the store (laughs) store and then phoned her. Yeah, that was the creepy bit for me. That's when it suddenly got like, this is a horror film. That's quite dark, yeah. (laughs) um, But yeah, like the whole thing lasted two and a half hours. So yeah, somewhere in there, he probably got phone numbers off people as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's mad. (laughs) That's insane. But who's... Why did... No one question, question it. <laughs> it's just it's this whole thing. It's like like I say, it's Darren Brown level. You just sound convincing enough, and people are going to believe you. Yeah, it's, that's terrifying. It's horrific. I'd like to think Hilarious. that I wouldn't get yeah. caught up in that. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe I would. But for the promise of like three grand, mm. what would you do for three thousand pounds? <laughs> Apparently, lick people's feet and ride them around like horses, horses and call them beautiful lady. Yeah, well, what? the beautiful lady thing. Every time you say it, you're gonna get fifty quid. Why not? Yeah, fuck it. Uh, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the wording of the article. It is. I think it's just <clears throat> the, the, the such a surreal thing. Like, climb on their back and have horse races. <laughs> Human horse race. Down the aisles. <laughs> like, it's a really funny concept, but it is horrible. It's horrible yeah. for them. Well, like, uh, it, it, it's it like... It's quite traumatising. Well, like, the, it's exactly like at the point where we were like, shit, this is like a horror film. Yeah, it's yeah. like exactly what... The woman said, like, it was funny at first, yeah. and then it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It was really fun. I imagine it probably is quite fun. Like, if you think, oh, it's, we're going to win <laughs> yeah, three grand, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. have it just to be silly. But two hours, man. Yeah. I don't know. After about, I don't know, like 20 minutes, I'd be like, is this... Is this worth it? <laughs> but then when you get 20 minutes in, you're like, fucking in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Been here 20 minutes already, might as well carry on. <laughs> <laughs> we are now both too scared to go into pound world. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose the uh, uh the, the 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 thing we're going to leave you with this week is be careful hmm. of pranksters, I guess. Like question who's on the other end of the phone because I get those phone calls all the time from like I don't know Birmingham or Manchester yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Imagine if I actually picked one up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was that. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, whenever I get those calls now, if there's a more than a night shift, mm-hmm. if if there's ever like five seconds or even two seconds mm-hmm. of silence <laughs> after I've said hello, I'm putting that phone down. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you never know; it could be some evil Irishman mm. <laughs> wanting to <laughs> wanting me have to you let someone like ride me. Like a horse. <laughs> I think that's a decent way to leave the episode this week. So uh I think we should <clears throat> get on our horses and get out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Come on beast and ugly. Uh, <laughs> 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 I almost feel like we should end it like an all seeing guys episode. <laughs> so for this week I've been Tom Beast Austin Morgan. And I've been Anthony Red Rum Collett. <laughs>